Hello Bridgewater College Education 370 students. In this screencast we're going to learn how to get Excel to determine the letter grade for us so that it can decide if a student gets a B plus, an A minus, whatever, based on our grading scale. Now we're going to use the same classes that we set up before. In fact, I'm going to use the same screencast both for those who did the grades on a point basis and the ones who did their grading book on a um, percentage basis. So in front of me now I have the class that is set up to be graded on a point basis. And as you recall, we calculated averages for each of our students. So what I want to do is to add a new column over here in column N and I want to put final grade here. So let's just put grade. I like for this to all be centered, so remember to click on the N and then click on the center button. And now we're ready to assign a grade uh, to the student. Now the trick for this is that you have to put your grading scale somewhere in Excel. I've chosen to put mine down here at the bottom of the page in row 25 through 36. And here I have the grades that are possible, F, D minus, D, D plus, and so forth, all the way to A. And I also have a grading scale here, it happens to be the Bridgewater grading scale. So the lowest D you can get is a 59.5%. Now you might know that in order for me to type that in, I had to type it as 0 0.595 and then I had to use the formatting option to convert that to a percentage. And likewise to get the grade of D here, I type 0 0.625. Now this means that any grade between a 59.5% to 62.5% is going to get a D minus. The, the number that's to the right of each letter grade then represents the lowest possible score you could get and receive that grade. So the lowest possible score you could get and receive an A minus would be an 89.5 which I would round to a 90 which would be an A minus. Likewise to get an A you have to have a 92.5 or higher. Uh, 92.5 would round to 93 and a 93 would be an A. So I have my grading scale set up down here uh, sort of hidden out of the way. So now let's go back to the top of our grading book and I want to have Excel determine what the letter grade for, for Betsy. Uh, according to my scale it should be a C plus because as you can see down here the lowest C plus is a 76.5 and she's got a 77. Alright so the way we're going to do this is to type a formula called lookup equal lookup L-O-O-K-U-P lookup parenthesis and I have to tell it what first of all what is it I want looked up I want the average looked up so I click on average then I type a comma and I tell it where do I want that looked up well I want it looked up over here in this column of possible grades so I highlight the whole column then I type a comma and I tell it where I want it to decide based on what it found in that column. In other words, I'm going to click on the F through A. I'll use close parenthesis and when I hit my enter key, sure enough it's assigned Betsy a grade of, of C+. Plus. So it has correctly looked up her grade of C+, plus based on the fact that her average came in a little bit higher than the minimum grade for a C+, plus, 76.5. Now we learned in the last screencast how to copy a formula and you would think I could just put my cursor here and drag down and it would correctly copy the formula. But I want to warn you the grades may not be correct and we need to fix that. Here's why. When I got Betsy's grade correct and then drugged to copy it to the other students all it did was it said okay there's a bunch of cells down here that you want to use and each time I went down one student from Betsy to Gus for example it went down one item in a row so it began calculating Gus's grade here to here that's not what I want I wanted to always use these values when it calculates a grade so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the formula for Betsy and I'm going to tell it that the column B, row 25 through 36, I want it to always use just column B, nothing else, just row 25 through 36. And the way to do that is to put a dollar sign before and after each value. So I've got 
dollar sign B, dollar sign 25, dollar sign B, dollar sign 36, dollar sign A, dollar sign 25, dollar sign A, dollar sign 36. Now, again, it's a little confusing, but I'm telling it that I always want you to use these cell values down here when you calculate every student's grade. Now when I drag her grade down, in this case the grades didn't change, but that's sort of by luck. So here we have Excel assigning our final grades. Now what's interesting is that remember that you are the teacher, you're in charge of the grades here. Uh, so for example, um, if I want to, to look at a particular student's average, uh, maybe it's uh, Thomas's, and Thomas says, why did I get an 8? out of 10 in participation. Now, I was I participated well. And you say, okay, I'll change it to a 10. You do. And his grade doesn't change one iota. So it doesn't make him any difference whether he got an 8 or a 10. On the other hand, Georgia, if we make her ex participation grade, instead of a 9, it's a 10. Notice that her grade does move to a C+. Plus. Let's try the same for the people who grade on a percentage basis. So I'm going to go to that class now. Once again, I've got my grades over here to the right, my final grades, and I have copied the grading scale down here beginning in row 25. This time, though, I didn't use percentages. I, I used numbers like 59.5 is the lowest D minus, uh, 86.5 is the lowest B plus, and so forth. So I'll use, I'll put the word grade here. I'll center just as we did before. I'm going to use that at lookup formula again equal lookup parenthesis I want it to look up the final grade comma I want it to look up the final grade in this column right here comma I want it to assume that whatever it finds it finds a corresponding element in this column here close parenthesis and now I have the formula set. But just as in the previous example, I need to go in and put those dollar signs in each of these values because I want it to always use that exact table, nothing else, when it calculates the final grade. I'll now drag a Betsy's grade on down to the others and we have their letter grades. Once again, we might do some what ifs. Uh, Henry got a D in this class, but remember he had that missing homework. What if you said to Henry, Henry, you've not turned in this homework. If you do your homework tonight and turn it in late, I'll give you a maximum of 80 points. So he does it. He turns it in the next day. We give him a maximum of 80 points, and his grade changes. So that's the kind of thing that, as a teacher, you can use to your benefit and to give students the opportunity to perform well in, in your classroom rewarding them when they achieve the grade that matches your grading scale. Well, I hope this has been useful for you.